as business owners, our biggest expense is our tax bill. That means we have to put a lot of attention and a lot of intention behind managing our taxes. But most business owners don't understand that managing our tax bill requires tax planning all year long, not just January through February. One of the things that you have to understand is that you have to be able to tax plan. That's why you need to stick with me throughout this video so I can explain to you how to tax plan your taxes or you can just continue to overpay. My name is Carla Dennis and I love making sure that people are going to become millionaires, especially my business owners. And one way to do that is to lower your taxes. Our community is growing. You guys are learning. I'm loving your comments. I'm loving the fact that you guys are subscribing to my channel. And I wanna invite you to invite your friends to like, comment, and subscribe so you guys don't miss out on any of this wealth building information. I want you to be a millionaire. And if you do too, I want you to comment millionaire below. Let's get after it. Home office expenses. If you are a business owner, one of the things that you absolutely need to be writing off is your home office. Many of you may think if I have a home and I have an office that maybe I shouldn't write it off because maybe I work a W-2 job or maybe I go work in someone else's office. But as long as you have a place in your home that you are using exclusively for your home office, and most of us do where we're setting up our laptop, our computers, doing our Zoom calls, you wanna make sure you're writing that home office off. And the way you're gonna write that off is you're gonna use the IRS simple method by taking $2,500 per year as a tax write-off, or you're gonna take your actual expenses times the square footage percentage of your entire home to the square footage percentage of your home office. Actual expenses can include your rent, your utilities, your insurance. If you have a mortgage, it includes your mortgage, it includes your property taxes, and all costs associated with running your home office. So make sure you get your home office as a tax write-off as a business owner. Office supplies and equipment is also an expense that you should be writing off. A lot of you may not think about your office supplies, things that you may have at home that you normally purchase, paper, ink for your printer, your internet connection, things like that. We wanna make sure that we're writing off and we certainly wanna write off our equipment. How about the desk that you're sitting at? How about the chair that you always work in? How about the lamp that you're always turning on when you're working on your laptop? And how about your laptop? How about your iPad? How about your cell phone? All of those things are equipment that you wanna be able to take advantage of and you wanna be able to write off. So make sure you're getting those office supplies, make sure you're getting that equipment written off. And if you periodically use your equipment for personal use, that personal use may be what we call de minimis. It's insignificant to the overall reason why you have that equipment. So I wanna make sure on your income taxes, you're writing off those office supplies, you're writing off that equipment so that you can lower your tax bill. Travel expenses. This is another area that does not get maximized the way that it should get maximized. Code section 274 says that we can write off our travel expenses that are associated with business. That means that you're traveling because of business. That's your primary reason why you're traveling. Now, just because you're traveling for business does not mean that there may not be some incidental costs associated with you having some personal fun while you're traveling. The cost associated with the personal part, the entertainment is no longer tax deductible, but the travel cost, the airplane, getting to the hotel, maybe the Uber fees, the taxi fees, those costs, the train, the plane, whatever it is, those costs are tax deductible. So you wanna be able to deduct those costs. And what's important is to make sure that you're logging your actual travel expenses. You wanna write down who, why you travel there, who you met with, the purpose, and how it's related to business. Make sure you keep the date and the time associated with it because IRS requires that. And when you become a millionaire, you wanna make sure you're following all the rules because you never want IRS to come back and take any of your money. Meals and entertainment. 
Meals are tax deductible, and meals can be tax deductible based on 50% of your meal cost. Meals can be tax deductible if they are meals that you have to have for the convenience of your business, if you are going out entertaining somebody, if you are giving an event and you are purchasing meals for the people that are in attendance, you can take your meal expenses. Remember though, in order to take those meal expenses, you have to keep what we call a copious log. A copious log means that you're gonna put down the date, you're gonna put down who you met with, why you had to have that meal. And that's so important that you do that. You also wanna maintain the receipt. What I like to do is I write on the back of my receipt the moment I have a meal, and I take a screenshot of the front of the receipt and the back of the receipt. Yes, people, IRS is still looking for meal receipts, even though you may show that you paid that meal on your American Express card or you paid for it on your ATM card associated with your business, they still want the actual receipt. That's the law. So make sure you keep your log, make sure you keep your receipts, and make sure you can document the way that you pay for your meal. Vehicle use. This is a big deal. Even if your business requires you to work predominantly via the internet, a lot of us work from home, a lot of us are doing business across the world, globally, and we're using our computers to do business. However, I don't know too many business owners that do not need to use their vehicles, whether they're using their vehicles to go to the bank, whether they're using their vehicles to go to the post office, to pick up supplies, to meet with a client, to go do some research somewhere, who knows? But make sure you are getting your vehicle expenses written off. And you can write off your vehicle expenses two traditional ways. You can use a standard mileage rate that's based on the IRS standards and it changes every single year. So make sure you look that up every single year. You can take the standard mileage rate times your business miles or you can take your actual expenses as a percentage of your business use. Allow me to give an example. Let's say that I drive 10,000 miles per year and 5,000 of those miles are business use. That's 50% of my miles are for business. That means I'm gonna be able to take 50% of all of my expenses, 50% of my gas for the year, 50% of my car payment interest for the year, 50% of my lease payment for the year, 50% of my insurance for the year, my repairs for the year. Just making sure you understand that you need to take those vehicle expenses, but you also have to keep that mileage log. IRS wants to make sure that you have an odometer reading, an odometer reading at the beginning of the year, an odometer reading at the end of the year. If you take your car in to get repaired, and let's say it gets repaired sometime in December, they're typically gonna write down your odometer reading on the repair bill. And then you wanna get an odometer reading at the beginning of the year. You may ask, well then why do you wanna do that? Because from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, that total mileage is a total mileage on your vehicle for the year. And then your business miles are going to be extrapolated from that. That gives IRS a definitive way of determining your total miles on your vehicle. You could also take a picture of your odometer reading if you can prove that you're in your car when you take that picture. But make sure, my friends, that you have that beginning and ending odometer reading so that you can verify your miles. Professional services. This is a category that you guys should really be maximizing. Professional services are when you're paying your accountant, if you're working with a lawyer, if you're working with maybe your social media company, professionals that you're doing business with. How about a mentor? How about a consultant? These are the expenses that you want to write off as professional services. It's important to realize that if you can link the cost of something to the pursuit of income, it becomes a write-off for you. That is very important. I think a lot of us just think, oh, I can just take any expense through my business, but you cannot. Your expense needs to be ordinary and necessary. And one way to really validate the ordinary and necessary is making sure you can link it to how you make your income. So make certain you get all of your professional services written off to lower that tax bill. Advertising and marketing. 
If you are not advertising and marketing as a business owner, you're gonna end up without a business. Even McDonald's advertise, even Microsoft advertises. That's because that is a very important element of running a business. When you're advertising and marketing your business, whether you are paying for social media services, whether you're paying for some software to track it, whether you have business cards, whether you belong to some type of networking group that you are paying a monthly fee towards, you want to write off your advertising and marketing services. One of the things that I used to do is I used to pay my sons to go out and put flyers on cars. That was advertising. And the money that I pay them was an advertising expense. So just remember, as a business owner, advertising and marketing is such an acceptable, necessary expense that IRS even put a line item on the tax forms for advertising. So take that as a big hint that you need to be writing off your advertising and your marketing expenses. Business owners, my future millionaires, my millionaires that are loading, the millionaires that are already out there listening. What did we learn today? We learned that we have to manage our taxes all year long. We learned that we need to be making sure we're taking our home office expenses. We need to be making sure we're taking our professional fees. We need to make sure we're taking our vehicle expenses. We need to be making sure we're taking our advertising and our marketing expenses, our meals and our entertainment expenses. We need to make sure we're taking our travel expenses. We need to make sure we're taking our office supplies. All of those as expenses. Because if you're not capturing those expenses, you're overpaying your taxes. And now that you know better, you absolutely have to do better. You need to make sure you comment, millionaire in the comments. You need to like, comment, and subscribe because you can't afford to miss out on any of this wealth building information. Now go get after it.